Morning everyone. A very quick intro for this video today, but basically I'm back at Corfe Castle and it's about probably 10-15 minutes before sunrise here today. And I wasn't expecting great weather conditions today, certainly not as good as when I came last year when I had some great kind of mist. It doesn't seem to be any mist here today, but because I've already kind of captured those shots, I'm not too bothered about that. Um, I'm just glad in a way that there's some cloud in the sky just to give some bit more of an interest for what I'm kind of intending to do today or what I'm kind of experimenting with today um, because the weather here um, in England the last few days has been kind of clear, blue, boring days even though it's nice to have a bit of sunshine finally. Um, basically the, the skies have been completely kind of clear blue so I'm glad uh, this morning there does seem to be a little bit of kind of interest in the sky to kind of capture today. So with it being so close to sunrise and I haven't really been to this particular spot it caught before. I'm kind of at the bottom of the hill in a kind of a lay by. And so what I'll do is I'll just get my act together, get out and try and get a good location for kind of sunrise just in case there is some good colours um, that we're going to kind of experience today. And then while there's still some kind of cloud and kind of interest in the sky, um, I'll talk to you again about what I'm hoping to achieve today. So let's get going. Right, so I didn't really um, have any time whatsoever to film anything that I've just kind of done. I really don't know how the kind of the likes of Thomas Heaton and Nigel Danson do this for a living because I got here and as you can probably see from some of that b-roll there was only really a little bit of cloud left in the sky so as soon as the kind of the sun is past that all the cloud is now gone so for the rest of the day it's going to be another kind of clear blue warm spring day here in Dorset and unfortunately that doesn't really make for that kind of spectacular photography that I kind of achieved here last year and yeah look because like last year I was here from probably 40 minutes before sunrise to probably nine o'clock and I was kind of getting shots all through the day so I got here about 10 minutes before sunrise so I've literally been here for 50 minutes and I think all the photography opportunities have kind of gone or the best ones anyway so it just goes to show that you need the kind of the, the conditions to really kind of perform here at Corfe Castle because the shots I've managed to achieve today are just not going to be a patch on those that I kind of achieved back in October last year when there was mist instead of mist today we've kind of got this hazy feel to the air and um, yeah but fingers crossed anyway while there was still cloud in the sky I did manage to kind of hopefully achieve what I was gonna achieve today right so as you can see I bought quite a bit of kit today on this little trip I basically bought my film camera my Olympus OM2N here along with its kind of 50 millimeter lens as well as a 135 millimeter lens and then also a 28 millimeter in the bottom compartment which i didn't actually kind of use yet then i also bought my olympus omd em1 with its 12 to 40 pro lens and then i also bought my fuji xe1 with the 35 mil f1.4 lens with me today what have i been doing today so last year when i was out with my yashika I actually bought a yellow filter for kind of monochrome photography to, to have a go with that lens and I was a little bit kind of disappointed with the results that I achieved from that setup. I didn't really kind of notice any difference between using the Shika with or without a yellow filter. So I decided to, to go a bit more kind of extreme and buy an orange 
and a red filter. Yeah, so I'll do a shot in manual and then I'll also let the camera do the metering as well, just to see whether there is any difference between the camera metering with the filters on and also metering using a kind of an external light meter. So yeah, so I'll try and find another composition now, one that hopefully the sun is a little less kind of strong in. So see you in a bit. Yeah, so I've picked this spot for my final composition today, just kind of using the light meter and then the camera's own metering system just to kind of take this composition. And even though the sun is quite bright, because it's kind of a bit hazy, it just kind of makes it a little bit more kind of ethereal here. Not quite as good as the same shot I kind of did from this location last year when there was a lot of mist around and the sun was kind of casting shadows into that mist in this image here but certainly i've just taken one with a digital and i'm kind of hoping with the kind of the the, the low level kind of haze and um, it will kind of produce a nice kind of shot so anyway i better get moving before the sun burns off that haze and we're left with kind of a green flat image here today so yeah so let me just take a couple digital shots because these will kind of might also be used when i compare the kind of the film with that silver fx pro 2 agfa apx 400 film simulation as well is the shots that i kind of took earlier today so yeah i'll just take some digital and then i'll get the film camera set up and then talk you through it all right so first shot set up i've got it on f16 because it's got a limit of one one thousandth of a second this camera and that's Kind of given me a shutter speed of about one five hundredth of a second if i switch it down to f11 which is probably what i want it's kind of pushing the boundary of what this kind of camera is capable of so i'll leave it f16 so this is auto um or aperture priority mode should i say for this camera so i'll just plug in the um i'll just plug in this little doodah helps reduce camera shake And we'll take the shot here. Right, so wind it on. I'll go through it first with the filters on and then I'll do it with the light meter just so I don't have to keep swapping between auto and manual on the camera. So let's get the filters out. I'm not sure how it's gonna to react to the sun in the scene, whether I'm gonna get kind of flare because I'm kind of shooting quite into the scene. Right, so wind it on. Take the orange one off. And put the red one on. So this is kind of leaving the camera in its aperture priority mode. Just for this bit. It's quite nice the scene actually in front of me. I'm, the castle is very kind of silhouetted at the moment in this scene. So I'm hoping it will kind of refavor that kind of monochrome look. So anyway, the red filter's on, F16 again, and it's dropping now down to about one 250th of a second in its kind of aperture priority mode. So we'll take that shot, and we go right. So what I'll do is I'll just take the filter off again, set it back to, set it back to F16, because it's so bright, it's, um, it's too bright. Right, so what I'm gonna do now is just gonna get my light meter here. Yeah, so you meter with the subject, so I tend to kind of just put the light meter in front of the camera, press the button on the side, and then you basically rotate the dial so that the indicator is on the zero. Yeah, I'm not sure I kind of believe what it's telling me. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure I trust the uh, the light meter today because it's basically, I think, telling me that for an aperture of f16, 
ISO 400 in this bright sun, it's telling me that the shutter speed should be 1 30th of a second, which is just balmy when the camera is telling me, and it's so bright that it's about actually closer to 1 1,000th of a second. Yeah, that, that's a little bit better using uh, an app on my phone. Basically, an F16 is about beyond the limitation of the camera because it's basically saying to expose it at f16 i need a shutter speed of one two thousandth of a second which my camera only does one one thousandth of a second so what i'll do is i will maybe just meter it down to 200 so that's saying then i might get away with f16 with an orange filter on the front so i might just do that now and then move the bulb now it's in manual mode though i need to change the the shutter speed to manual yeah so that's saying between about one one thousandth and one five hundredth of a second so i might kind of go to one because it's very bright i might just drop the shutter speed down to one five hundredth of a second and just take the scene there right so let's go with orange filter manual settings aperture of f16 150 one five hundred of a second and the camera still kind of showing slightly underexposed but we'll see how this one turns out right same again but i'll just switch to the red filter and this time i'll set the light meter down two stops down so instead of ISO 400 it will be ISO 100 so S16 but because I dropped it down I might drop it down another one to one 250 just to kind of underexpose it a little bit as well so yeah let's take an image there right so I think that's about it today and um, we'll go back to the office now and I'll kind of Hopefully I'll have some kind of good results from this trip to kind of share with you and um, discuss. So see you in a bit.